Hey, my name's Murray, if we haven't yet met. Kaz and I have the privilege of being part of the team here and um, just being a part of trying to keep up with God, to be honest, about what God's up to here and just trying to keep up with him and, and trying to help to lead with a great team, um, lead in a direction that uh, we, we feel like God is, is taking the church, which is pretty awesome. Before I kick off this series, I wanted to talk about a couple of things that you may have, um, may have on your seats. Firstly, they're prayer and praise cards. Now, these are a little different to the normal prayer and praise cards we have out at the info point. Because this month, you would have picked up on some of the videos that we are in expansion month. And we do this every year. We talk about what was it, would it look like for us to have an expansive faith? What would it look like for us to have prayers that are expansive prayers? Believing God for the big. What would it look like for us to, be, to live lives of expansive generosity? And so we're going to speak into that over the next four weeks. But what we want to do is we want to give a real focus to prayer. And so these prayer and praise cards are there for you to write on each week. And on the left-hand side over here, you'll see there's what we're going to call a prayer wall or a prayer and praise wall. One side's prayer, one side's praise. It's in a bit of a shadow there, but you'll notice that some are already being pinned on. What we want you to do each week is come with these expansive prayers or these things that we've, we can praise God for, which I love what Maddie was sharing in worship. What are we praising God for? And write them down. And then at the end of the service, or even in the middle of the service, if you want to get up and pin it on, and pin it onto the board. And then each week we want to see more prayer points and more praise points. And we're believing by the end of the month, some of the prayer points will actually become praise points because God will be answering our prayers. But we want to have a real focus on that. So that's what that's there for. It'll be there every week. Encourage you to grab those, write down. If you need a pen, there's a little table on the side with lots of pens. Um, write them down. If you want to take it home, pray over it, write on it. That's great too. And then pin it a little bit later on. That would be awesome. We'll give you opportunity and we'll speak more into that each week. Um, and then on the last Sunday of this month, the 29th, is our expansion party. And our expansion party is a time where we're going to come and celebrate. We're going to come and celebrate who God is, firstly and foremost, and what he's doing in our lives. And it'll be a time where we're going to pledge um, this expansive generosity. And there'll be an opportunity for you to give from a generous, generosity point of view, a one-off giving to see that we can't continue to advance God's kingdom and have the resources and the finances ready to do that. And we'll speak into that over the next few weeks. But I wanted to give you a heads up about that. If you want more information, there are pledge cards will be available here uh, on your seats next week, but this week they're out of the info point. So that's just a little bit of, a little bit of background around all of that. All good? <laughs> there we go. Those of you who know me know, know that I don't mind um, shouting out, um, except for heckling. I actually had one person heckle me once. In this is not an idea to do it. But I actually did about, I don't know, 15 years ago. I, I, I said something and, uh, and somebody wanted to engage in conversation around that in the middle of a, a service. So it was quite interesting. So please don't do that. To the... <laughs> what I do want to do, though, is I want to, I want to kick off this expansion series this morning. And I want us to look at a prayer that a, a one man prayed that changed everything. But I want to start, but I want to take you back into the Old Testament. Now, real quick. If you're new or you're checking God out and you're checking church out and this is all brand new to you, First Chronicles is not where I would suggest you start. I'm going to go into an Old Testament, book of the Old Testament. We're going to look into that. So if you like, we need, deep to, we need to get into the, old, the Word and the, the Old Testament. We're going to do that today, so we're going to please you. But if you're new, can I say to you, the best place to start is the Gospels. Best place for you to start to say, hey, what is it about faith and church and God and Jesus? Go to Matthew, Mark, Luke or John, which is about two thirds of the way through the Bible. If you've got one of these, easier to find if you've got, got an app on your phone and read the Gospel of Mark or the Gospel of John and read about the life of Jesus. Powerful, powerful stuff. Um, and we spent a lot of time in the Gospels. But this morning I want to go to First Chronicles. Now, let me give you some background. The first nine chapters of First Chronicles is the family tree. It's the Hebrew tribes. It starts with Adam, the first, and it goes through generation after generation after generation after generation through thousands of years to Israel's return to captivity. It's a long list of unfamiliar and difficult names. I don't know how long we've got, but we're going to try. We're going to start with First Chronicles chapter 1. You ready? Here we go. 
Here we're going to start with Noah. From Noah, from Adam, so we're going to start with Adam. From Adam to Noah's sons. The descendants of Adam were Seth. So, okay, so the children of Adam were Seth and Kenan and Mahalal and Jared and Enoch and Methuselah and Lamech and Noah. The sons of Noah were Shem and Ham and Shapheth. You want me to keep going? Okay, bring up the next slide. (laughs) So, uh, no, no, no. I could keep going and it just goes... One, the descendants of Shepheth were Goma and Magog and Madai and Jevon and Tubal. And so you finish with, so we keep going. And if you go right through, there's around about 52 verses. And right through to the end, the descendants of Rama were Sheba. And it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. Right down to, and these were the clan of Edom. Whew. Chapter 2. This is why I said if you're new, you probably don't want to be spending time trying to read and pronounce these names. There's a reason I'm not reading through all these. I can't pronounce all their names. Chapter 2, the sons of Israel were Reuben and Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar. And are you getting the hint that there's a few names here? So we go right through chapter 2 and then we go to chapter 3 and it's the same. Although what I would, would say to you is as you read through those, you get to the sons of David. So you'll start to see some names that are familiar to you. But tribe after tribe, family after family, name after name. Now I'm not going to spend the next 30 minutes going through all the names. But what I want you to know is that's chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Then we go to chapter 4 and it continues again. The descendants of Judah were Perez and Hezron and Kami and Hur and Shabal. And it goes right through. And then after around about 44 names, halfway through the fourth chapter, suddenly a story breaks through. So name after name, no description except son, son of or father was the father of, but no description at all until we get to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, Four chapters in, verse 9. And then it's almost like there's a story, but it's almost like, stop. And this is what we read. After all these descendant of, descendant of, descendant of. Now Jabez was more honourable than his brothers. So he goes, then there's the descendant of Jabez. And then it's like this, stop. Hang on a minute. Before we keep going, we need to, we need to look at Jabez. Now Jabez was more honourable than his brothers. His mother called his name Jabez, saying, I bore him in pain. So the word, the name Jabez means I bore him in pain. Not a great way to start your life, is it? I'm going to call you Jabez because you're all about pain. Keep going. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested and then very next verse we go directly back to the roll call of the tribe of Judah it picks off where it left off as if nothing had happened and then Caleb the, the brother of Shuha the father of Mehur, Mehur the father of Ashton and it just keeps going now I don't know about you but if I'm reading through that trying to stay awake as I read through all the names yeah and then I get and then all of a sudden there's this pause and there's this couple of paragraph or a couple of verses of a prayer of a man named Jabez and then God answered his prayer at the end of it and then back to all these names again I'm going to go hang on a minute what the heck's going on here why why in the midst of all of that naming all the tribes would would the scriptures stop and God want us to focus in for a moment on a on a guy called Jabez whose name means born born in 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 pain So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to look at why did God do that and what is it about Jabez? There is something about Jabez that caused the writer of 1 Chronicles to pause the family tree, to focus, to press in. As if to say, hang on a minute, you've got to know something about this guy, Jabez. You've got to understand something about this guy. There is something about this guy that if you get it and you get what he prayed and the way he prayed, it will change your eternity And it will change and expand the way you think. So what is it about Jabez? Because if you search the scriptures, scriptures, you can't find much information about Jabez. There's actually only around about two verses. So what do we know? Things started badly with him, for him. 
He was a bloke that no one had ever heard of that was named Payne. He prays this unusual prayer, one sentence, short, sharp, to the point. Sidebar. You know, I think God likes that. He likes it when we spend time with him. But I, like, I think God likes it when we just go, God, this is what I want to pray about right now. So if you've ever struggled with prayer because you hear people with these amazing, eloquent prayers, I think we can learn from Jabez, God loves it when we spend time with him and he loves it when we're just real and honest and open and raw. It doesn't have to be the, the, the beautiful, eloquent stuff that some people pray. It can just be, God, please help. Anyway, things started badly. He prays this unusual one-sentence prayer. And thirdly, things end extraordinarily well. A man that seems to have no future earns the more honourable award from God. Remember how it started? Jabez was more honourable than his brothers. Look at it again. Let's look at it again. First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9. Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, that you would enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, and that I may not cause pain. So God granted him his request. You know, today as we, we kick off this series and we consider what God might be saying to us as a church, but also what God might be saying to you as individuals around this exciting expansion series, this expansion season that we're in at Highlands, I want to look at the Jabez requests and see how his requests and what he talks about might release something miraculous in your life and in my life. So let's unpack it. Let's unpack the prayer of Jabez. Firstly, he prays, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. How many know that it's okay to ask God for his blessing? You know, sometimes I think, and Aussies particularly, it's kind of like, oh, you know, we, you know who, who, am I, who am I to ask God for something? It's like, no, no, God says, will, will you come and will you ask? You have not because you ask not, the Scriptures say. He loves it when we come to him and say, God, would you bless me? God, would you come? You see, Jabez asked God for favour. The question might be, when was the last time you personally asked God for favour on your life? Maybe you never have. Maybe this whole idea of prayer is a bit different. We can learn from Jabez that God loves it when we come to him and we ask him for favour. Jabez simply wanted to be more and he wanted to do more for God in his life. And despite his beginnings and despite his current prospects of what life was going to look like for Jabez, he believed in a big, expansive God. And so he said, would you bless me indeed? He grew up hearing about this God that freed his forefathers from slavery. Jabez grew up hearing about a God who rescued, powerful, uh, rescued people from powerful enemies. He grew up hearing about a God who provided and established them in a land of plenty. Jabez believed and trusted in a God with an expansive mindset where God brought miracles and God started new beginnings and God breathed new life. And God took what was broken and made it whole. Jabez believed in that God. The same God that we stand and believe in today. So this God dreamer, if you think about the last series we just came off, this God dreamer, Jabez, with an expansive faith thought, why not just ask God? So he did. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Let's just unpack those words. When in the scriptures, when the word indeed was put on the back of something, it was like, it was like writing it in capitals. It was like underlining. It was like putting sort of five exclamation marks at the end of it. It's like, God, I just don't want you to bless me. Bless me indeed. I'm not, I'm not just looking for little. I'm looking for a big part of God who you are in my life. Expansive prayers. Not holding back, but saying, God, I believe in a big God. And so would you move powerfully in my life in a big way? You know, when you're, when you're on social media or you read social media and all of a sudden there's, there's, the, there's the, the capitals and you don't put capitals because it's supposed to be shouting. Well, it's like Jabez was shouting, God, would you bless me? Because I believe in you and I believe that's what you want for my life. 
Jabez saw his past and he saw his present and he couldn't quite see a future. So he asked God, would you come? Would you bless me? Father, bless me. In fact, bless me a lot. It's interesting because today the word bless really has been watered down in the English language today. If you think about it, somebody sneezes, bless you. And if they don't bless me, then I get worried. Well, bless me, I just sneezed. You know, before we eat, we, we ask God to bless our food or, or um, you know, if, oh, we, we've been blessed with nice weather today. And we've kind of watered blessing down where God says, when I bless, it's an expansive thing. And I can bless in the little, but I love blessing in the big. He, he's a big God, an expansive God that wants to bless in the big. And he wants us to ask for. Jabez is showing us he wants us to ask for the big. I want you to get this. It's radical to understand. When we ask for God's blessing, we're crying out for the wonderful, unlimited goodness that only God can give. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22 says, The Lord's blessing is our greatest wealth. All our work adds nothing to it. Out of all the things we could have, God's blessing is the greatest that we could, we could ever experience. And this radical aspect of Jabez's prayer is that he left the whole entire part of how and what the blessing was going to be to God. Did you get that? God bless me indeed by giving me a wonderful Maserati and my wife a beautiful diamond ring that's really big, expensive because it's indeed. No, no, no. He just says, God, bless me indeed, and I'm going to trust you with what that looks like. Wow. God, show me what I can pray big for. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a beautiful diamond ring, and there's nothing wrong with having a beautiful, expensive car. and a beautiful, expensive... I'm not saying that that's wrong. But what, what, what's radical about Jabez's prayer, prayer is he left entirely up to God what the blessings were going to be, where, when, and how he would receive it. He just said, God, bless me indeed. And if you look further, what he does with the blessing is quite powerful because he uses it to advance God's kingdom. So even though it sounds like a really selfish prayer, some of you are sitting there going, that sounds like a pretty selfish prayer. It wasn't Jabez's motivation because he uses it to advance the kingdom. Land for his tribes. See, the biblical meaning of bless is not small. The biblical meaning of bless is to receive supernatural favour. When's the last time you prayed, God bless me indeed. God bring your supernatural favour into my life. The reason Jabez's prayer is in the scriptures is because that's how God wants us to pray. Some people think Christians are, you know, they're, you know, they're Christians, you know, they're just the meek and mild. God doesn't want meek and mild Christians. He wants us to be, he wants us to be bless me indeed. He wants to be, us to be expansive in our nature of the things of God. Expansive in our nature of the things of God. Not expansive in our nature of I want more, 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 more. That's not what I'm talking about. Expansive in our nature of how we can experience the things of God. Bless me indeed. Matthew 7 verse 7 says, Ask and it will given to you, be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. I love ask, seek, knock. What's he saying? Come to me. Seek my blessing. James chapter 4 says you don't have because you don't ask. God says, I love it when you come to me and you seek my blessing. I want you to get this. Even though there's no limit to God's goodness, if you didn't ask him for a blessing yesterday, you may not have received all that God had for you today. If you didn't ask for God's blessing yesterday, God, would you come and bless me indeed so that I might advance your kingdom. I might experience more of you. I might shine your life in this world. I might be able to be generous in the lives of others. If you didn't ask for God's blessing yesterday, maybe he hasn't given you yet what he wants to give you for today and tomorrow. Just ask him. Bless me indeed. Bless my business. Bless my children. Bless my life. When was the last time you asked God to bless you indeed? Jabez is asking God to bless him greatly, exceedingly, abundantly, and he's leaving what that looks like to God. Jabez prayed a prayer to God to enlarge and expand his life. 
Not so that he could enjoy it selfishly, but so he could share it and bless others with it. If you look in 1 Chronicles chapter 2 and verse 55, if you're wondering about well, what happened there, you'll find land named after Jabez where many families reside. It shows that Jabez's main intention was to be better resourcing to do God's work, to advance God's kingdom. So what would it look like for you to ask God to bless you indeed so you could be a blessing with this expansion offering? God might bless you indeed so that you might be able to share and expand the things of the kingdom of God for others. God, bless me indeed so that I can give to your work in the kingdom. Bless me indeed so I can have a greater faith in my prayer life for others. Bless me indeed so that I can be ready to go and pray for others. Bless me indeed so I can be ready to help others in their time of need. God, that you would bless me indeed. Second part of the prayer. God, that you would enlarge my territory. I love the fact that we're calling this season expansion and the, the ripple effect or the echo effect of having expansive mindset and enlarge my territory mindset. Enlarge, expand, broaden, increase, extend, grow, magnify. That's the sort of words that Jabez was using when he was praying about his territory. Beyond my current situation. God, you're a big God. You're a God of expansion, so expand my mindset. When he's saying territory, he's saying expand my mindset. He's saying expand what I have before me. He's saying expand practically what I can use and what I can do. Help me to see beyond the barriers that I put up, God. Expand my territory. You see, as we look at the bigness of God, the concerning paradigm that we wrestle with right now is that with the cultural effects of COVID and what's happening in the world with, with interest rates going up and the challenges of the world, our world, with our big God, our worlds are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Society and culture of the world would say gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Look after yourself, self first, protect. Whereas God says, I want you to live an expansive life. Have your eyes open to the bigger things of life. So people are looking more inward, not outward. And the world is getting smaller and smaller. Yet the paradox for God is he's saying in the midst of what the world is saying, what would it look like for you to live an expansive life? To ask him to enlarge my territories. God says live expansive. God calls us to live an enlarged life. He says look outward. Look for opportunities. Look to bless others. See, God's desire is for you and me to live a large life. It is. Wherever things are at for you, his desire for you is to pray, God, expand my territories and live big for me. Live big for me. So what would that look like? Let me show you a video that Mitch shot this, this week down at the land. Many of you may not be aware, but we've just, the church has just purchased 100 acres in Highfields that we might be able to not just build a nice church building. See, see, the idea might be we could just build a lovely church building that might seat enough to fit us or maybe as a bit of a growth. And, and that's great. We, we're providing. We've got our own place. And people say, that's amazing. But we believe God's given us an expansive faith. We believe God's, God's given us an expansive vision he wants us to enlarge our territories. And so he's provided for us. And we've taken a faith step to purchase this land. Just show that video. Um, Greg, thanks. So this is the land on um, Warmer Road. So Corridor Road becomes Warmer Road on the left-hand side, almost to the end. This is our land. This is the land that Highlands Highfield is going to be building on. And what I love about the beauty of this land is where it's situated, is, is there for when Highfields continues to expand out. It's not smack in the middle of the CBD of Highfields, but it's out. We're ready for the expansion of buildings and expansive land. And over the other side of the road, there's, um, yeah, over the other side of Warmer Road, there's already subdivisions about to start there as well. So we're not just going to build a small church building. We're going to build an early learning centre because we need Christian um, Education and we need Christian child mining, and we need so we're building an after school program, an early learning center. We're building a college for more Christian education in this area, specifically for the Highfields people and beyond. And we're building a church, and potentially we may even look at building a, a, a retirement area. 
so we can provide for the needs of our community. So people, and there's going to be a cafe in there as well. So we can say, community, we've, we've got an expansive view and we want to serve you as a community. We're not, we're not just going to build a church building that's going to be great for the church people. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's your call. But we feel God's given us a more expansive view, an expansive vision. So when we say God expand our territories and we prayed, people from this church prayed for land. People from the Middle Ridge campus prayed for land. That we could step out in faith and go, God, we believe in a big God. And we're not sure how this is going to happen. But we're trusting you that you'll get us to that place. Expansive nature of the kingdom of God. I think God loves it when we have big vision, when we say expand by territories. See, we have the opportunity of making a significant difference and impact in high fields and beyond by enlarging our territory physically, but also, more importantly, spiritually. Personally, but also as a church. So when we say expand our territories, we're praying that as a church. God, would you expand our territories within youth? God, would you expand our territories within kids' program? So we've just, we've just appointed Jana, as you know, last week or the week before we appointed Jana as, as our kids' pastor, part-time, to, to help to resource the amazing team we've got in kids. Why? Because we're saying, God, expand our territories within our kids' ministry. It's a chance for us to embrace the opportunity to make an impact for God and to partner with God on something really significant. God, that you would expand my territories. What would it look like for you to pray that prayer in your business? What would it look like for you to pray that prayer in your family? What would it look like for you to pray that prayer in your faith walk? God, expand my territories. In, my rela- in your relationships, God, give me opportunities to share with others. Whatever territory might look like for you, maybe that's a question to God. God, what is my territory this week? And God, would you expand it? Would you create opportunities for it? Jabez wanted more so he could give more. Jabez was asking God to enlarge his life, his finances, his influence so he could have a greater impact for God. He wanted more influence, more responsibility, more opportunities to make a mark for God. What would it look like for you to say, God, would you expand my territory so I can make a wider mark, a deeper mark, a more significant mark for God? God, expand my territories. Youth, Friday night, 29, 30 30 kids. New teenagers, two making decisions for Jesus. God, expand our territories. So many youth in high fields and beyond that aren't connected to God. God, expand our territories. Give us physically opportunities and places where, where the kids can meet. Give us resources that we can sow into our children. God, expand our territories. That's the prayer that we want to bring. And God's reminder is that we're asking God. We're not trying to do it in our own strength. Lord, take everything you've put under my care and expand it. Lord, take everything you've put in my field, in my realm, and expand it. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 reminds us of it's God's power. It's not by might, nor by power, but my, by my spirit, says the Lord. So whatever you're doing, God, would you expand my territory? God, would you bless me and do? God, would you bring it in my life? You and I have the opportunity to do this, expand God's kingdom, to take territory for him. So what does it look like practically, Murray? I'll give you an example of a a mate of mine back in Melbourne um, who really felt strongly um, that God had called him into business for him. That that part of his ministry was in business, through his employees, through the people that he he connected with within business, and his business itself, that he wanted to develop a business, not so that he could have a big business, so financially he could sow back into the things of the kingdom. He just felt that was his call, like many in this room do. And at the time that we met, um, he he ran a he well, he still runs a a branding and a sign signage business. And um, he came across this prayer. And he started to pray this prayer, not as a formula, but he started to just pray this prayer and say, God, give me the mindset that Jabez had. And he asked God to bless him indeed. And he asked him to bless his business and expand his territories in his business. Now, Glenn started his business, him and his dad started a business in their garage. And then, and then they moved into a, a really small factory. 
And in, 2000, in the lead up to 2006, the Commonwealth Games were in Melbourne. The Com Games that were just, just were in Birmingham were in Melbourne in 2006. And their business was chugging along all right as a small little business. And he decided to tender for the Commonwealth Games, for all the branding, all the signage for the Commonwealth Games. And so he thought, he prayed about it and he said he was asking God to expand his territories and he saw this and thought, I'm going to tender for it. I'm going to trust God with this. And so he kept praying, God, expand my territories. I'm believing this is of you. I'm going to step into this. I'm going to tender for this amazing big opportunity. And God created connections along the way that, that Glenn could never, ever design himself and opportunities and conversations. And the long story short, that his business got the contract for the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne. And that led to so many other opportunities where now he does, he does business and he does work in all sorts of different areas. He connects in with, he connects in with places like um, uh, Adidas and Officeworks. He connects in with, with businesses like Bunnings and Meyer and Cotton On. Businesses that keep growing and developing bit by bit. Bit by bit, as he continues to say, God, would you bless me indeed? God, would you expand my territories? God, come, by Spirit. And what I, what I really believe about the way that God's worked in Glenn's life is Glenn has always been faithful in his generosity. See, I believe God trusts him. When he says, bless me indeed and expand my territories, it's not just so I can say, he can say, look at me, look at what I've got. And Glenn, Glenn has done very, he's been very successful individually, but his heart is to advance the kingdom. And so it's, his business started small, but he believed in a big God and he trusted him. And he said, would you expand my territories? And he's got expansive thinking with his personal tithes and his business now tithes as he continues to have this mindset. Bless me indeed. See, God intervenes when we put his agenda before our own agenda. If you're doing your business God's way and you're asking him to bless, then he can move powerfully. So powerfully. No matter what your vacation, no matter what your area of influence is or your territory, this Jabez prayer, please expand my opportunities. Please expand my impact in such a way that I might touch more lives for you, God. You might glorify, be glorified in the way I live my life. Thirdly, he prays, God, that your hand would be with me. God, that your hand would be with me. See, Jabez realises this is not about him. It's about God. And God's leading and God's, God's directing, God's blessing. So when he says, your hand be with me, he's saying, and would you make sure I'm walking where you want me to walk? That my prayers don't become so much about me and not about what you want for me. Your hand would always be with me. That I don't, I'm not away from you. If, your hand, if my hand's not with Kaz... Then, then I'm not with her and she can be in a place and I'm not even sure. But if my hand is with Kaz, we're together in this. He said that your hand would be with me, that we would never separate. There'd be anything, nothing happened in my mind and my heart that would move me away from the things of you. That I would always walk with you. I love this. He asks this big prayer and then it's almost like he's reminded. And in the middle of this big prayer of expand my territories, God, that I never leave you. That my hand is with you, that you are leading me and guiding me and directing me. I remember when, when our little girls, when our girls who are not little anymore, Brookie's 31, Casey's 29, but when they were little, we, we were living in Melbourne and we came up to the, uh, all the theme parks and we went to Wet and Wild and, and I love the water slides. And Casey was only little and loved to, to do things, but she was also a little, oh, she was a, a little fearful to start off with. And so she said to me, she said, Daddy, would you... Would you come with me? Would you hold my hand? I want to do it, but I'm not sure. Daddy, would you hold my hand? Would you come with me? And so I walked with her to the top of the water slides, held her hand as we walked up, and we went down together. And it's almost like that's what God's saying to us. He's saying, he's saying I want you to say, Daddy, I don't want to let go. I've got these big dreams, these big prayers. I'm praying these big things, but I'm never going to let you go because I want you to lead me and guide me and direct me. That's what our God is like. That he never wants, to, wants us to walk away from him. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5, he says, There is nothing in us that allows us to claim that we are capable of doing this work. No, there's nothing in us that allows us to claim that we can, we can do big things for him. The capacity we have comes from God. 
You see, it's tragic that the hand of God doesn't move in our lives. It's tragic that the hand of God is so seldomly experienced in our lives when God wants to, but we're not reaching out to him and saying, God, you. God, you. Like a loving father, like I was with Casey, God is watching and he's waiting for you and I to ask. He's watching and he's waiting for you and I to take my hand. Watch what we can do together. Second Chronicles um, chapter 16 verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, because he wants to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. God's eyes are looking for people who are going to be loyal and their hearts are strong to him to say, pray these prayers and hold on to my hand and watch what we can do together. See, I believe that you and I are one prayer, one plea. You and I are one ask away from God doing something miraculous in our lives. God bless me indeed. God advance, expand my territories. Your hand be on me. We're one plea, we're one ask away from God doing the miraculous. And then God, I love the end of it, and God granted his request. He didn't demand it of God. God, do this. God, would you? Bless me indeed. What is it this morning? God, bless me indeed in this relationship. God, bless me indeed in this moment. God, bless me indeed in this business. God, expand my eyes to what I can do for you in my life. Expand the territory of my family. Expand the territory in the moments, the day by days. And I want to say to you that this this is, I want to finish with this. This is not a formula. So it's not that I've heard some people go, oh, the JB, I'm praying the JBS prayer. And it's like one plus one equals two. If I pray this and pray this and pray this, then that. See, this is not a formula. It's not a formula prayer. It's a faith prayer. I know that you are able to bless me indeed. I trust you that you want to expand my territories. See, the challenge for us Highlanders is to pray and live just as Jabez did. An enlarged life, an expansive life, a church that expresses a life of expansion as a church. God's answering our prayers already with this land. He's answering our prayers already with the number of young people walking in the doors on a Friday night and kids coming to know Jesus and kids accepting Jesus. God's answering our prayers where he's bringing just the right person to come to step in to help to coordinate our kids' ministry. God's answering our prayers with an amazing worship team. God's answering our prayers where people that we know are coming to know Jesus. God's answering our prayers with people we're inviting along to come and to hearing this amazing God that that so many people never hear about. But what God's doing, what he wants for our lives. So many people don't know this God. They don't understand. They've, They've never thought about having a relationship with a God who wants amazing things for us. If you're here this morning and this is the first time you've heard about this God, this Jesus who died for you, that you might have an incredible life with God, then I'm going to give you the opportunity of connecting with Him in a moment. But let me ask you, if God loves you infinitely and God wants you in His presence every moment, and if He knows that heaven is a much better place for you than earth, then why has He left you here right now? Why are you here on earth right now? I'll tell you why. Because he's got plans and purposes for you. He wants to use you in amazing, powerful ways to make a difference here on earth so that the kingdom of God could be advanced. That's why you're here. Not, Not so that you can accrue wealth. Not so that you can get heaps of friends on Facebook. Not so that your 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 Instagram goes through the roof. It's not it's not for any of those reasons. The reason you're here is because God wants to use you to advance his kingdom. We've been asked by God to expand his territories. For him. So what are you asking for and what are you believing for? 
We've got these prayer and these praise cards. Maybe this morning it's time to write down an expansive prayer. Would you bless me indeed prayer? Maybe it's on the praise card. It might be, God, thank you that when I prayed that prayer, you answered that prayer. I started by saying he loves it. He loves it when we pray. That's why in in 1 Chronicles we stop with Jabez because he loves it when we seek him. When you seek him, you will find him. When you seek him with all your heart. Let me pray for you. Let's bow our heads. So I wonder what you're seeking him for this morning. I wonder what you're asking him for this morning. I wonder whether this morning might be a moment where you, where you realise, I've got to stop praying little prayers and start praying big prayers for God. I'm going to start asking him for big things that I might make a difference for the kingdom of God. Would you be willing to start to do that? Maybe your faith step this morning is to start to pray big things over your business, over your family, over your life, over your ministry, over your relationships, over all. So Father, I pray for every person in this room that we would be known as people who have a faith like Jabez, people who have a love for you like Jabez. Would you bless every person here and encourage them and challenge them in this expansion series that this might be the start of a new way we see our God. You know, if you, if you're, while we're in this moment of prayer with every head bowed and every eye closed in this attitude of prayer, you may be hearing me talk about this God this morning and think, I, I, I want to know this. You talk about this God as if he's a personal God. Well, he is for very, very a lot of us in this room. I remember in my mid-20s, I prayed a simple prayer and asked him to come into my life and to lead my life. I asked him to lead my life. I asked him to forgive me for the things I'd done in my life where I'd ignored him and I asked him to come into my life. And it was the most life-changing moment for me. And I would love for you to experience the same God that I know. And in this quiet moment, I want to pray an expansive prayer for you. So if that's you this morning, if you, if you, said, if you would say, I, w- I want to know the God you know, Murray. I want to invite him into my life. If that's you, could I pray for you with every head bowed and every eye closed? I just want to know who I'm praying for. If that's you in the place right now, would you just raise your hand so I can know who I'm praying for? I'm going to pray for you right now. But I want to know who I'm praying for. That's awesome. Yeah, I see you. That's, that's fantastic. Really cool. Young and old. That's fantastic. Is there anyone else that says, you know, Murray, would you pray for me right now? I want to know the God that you know. I want to, I want to experience this Jesus that you're talking about. Just one more moment. So good. That's fantastic. I love it when I see young people, older people saying, you know what, that's me. I need, I need this Jesus, Murray. Thank you. That's awesome. So Father God, I just pray for those people that have accepted you, that have said, I need Jesus. God, would you come into their hearts? Would you bless them? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you would empower them to live faith-filled lives where they're turning to you. And Father, for everyone else in this place right now, I thank you that you're doing something in our hearts and our spirits that we are changed. And we're going to go after the things you want us to go after. In Jesus' name.